A roach infestation forced health inspectors to temporarily shut down a southwest side restaurant. The owner told me this week he's working hard to win back his customers and keep things clean behind the kitchen door. Benjamin's Kitchen, located in the 12,000 block of Fisher Road, earned an 80 on their May inspection. They were also forced to shut down due to a significant roach problem. Live and dead roaches were found in several areas and crevices in the kitchen and behind equipment. Roaches were even seen crawling around uncovered food. The business was also in need of some serious cleaning. The inspector noting a detailed cleaning is required to remove a buildup of grease, dust, and debris. The inspector suspended their license and gave them a long list of violations to correct before being allowed to reopen. They were open for business when I stopped by this week to ask some questions. I'm with KSAT, I do behind the kitchen door. I wanted to ask somebody about the recent inspection you guys had that led to the shutdown? Oh, we're not interested in being on camera. Initially, co-owner Benjamin Gomez didn't want to talk, but then agreed to go outside. He said they were closed for three days to clean and deal with the roach problem. We've uh, solved the issues. We've had uh, exterminators come out and uh, the inspector has come out and verified that we've taken care of everything. He hopes his customers give them a second chance. We're very close with our customers and yeah. we obviously care about them because it's our livelihood. Absolutely. You know, but as far as all the issues, they have been dealt with and um, we hope it doesn't happen again. Saltgrass Steakhouse in the 2800 block of Cinema Ridge got a 76 on their May inspection. Pest activity was evident throughout the establishment, including live and dead roaches. Cheese was found stored next to raw burgers and steaks. Dishes were not being properly sanitized. A dirty salad bowl and tongs were stored right on top of clean salad. An employee was touching food with bare hands and multiple food items in use were past their expiration dates. A re-inspection was ordered. <coughs> Wing Daddy Sauce House at 903 Bitters got an 82. Unspecified pests were flying around in the kitchen. An employee wasn't wearing a hair restraint and a cup was found stored in sauce. The business was unable to show proof of food manager and food handler certifications and the permit they had posted was expired. For Behind the Kitchen Door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. In politics, uh, President Biden was on the road in Pennsylvania today to kick off his bid for re-election. The president addressing a rally of union workers in Philadelphia and accepting an endorsement from the AFL-CIO, which represents 60 unions and more than 12.5 million workers in Pennsylvania. The president touted an economic message that his policies had created jobs and lifted the middle class, telling them that it's now time for the wealthy to pay, pay their fair share in taxes. While in Philadelphia, the president surveyed the damage of last week's I-95 bridge collapse. Well, the University of Michigan survey shows Americans are actually feeling more upbeat about the economy. According to their data, consumer sentiment went up 8% from May to June, bringing it to its highest level in four months. Researchers say people are more optimistic since the debt ceiling crisis was resolved and inflation has eased a little. Another recent survey released by the Federal Bank of New York found that consumers' near-term inflation expectations, expectations rather, are at the lowest level in two years. A scathing new Department of Justice report is detailing serious issues with Minneapolis's police department. That report found that Minneapolis police racially discriminated against minorities, violated constitutional rights, and disregarded the safety of people in their custody for years leading up to the murder of George Floyd. Now, in those findings, they were the result of a two-year probe and confirmed many citizen complaints about law enforcement conduct following the death of George Floyd. All right, it's summertime, so as you book those vacations, do you wonder just how clean your hotel room is? Or maybe you don't think about it. Oh, I do. <laughs> 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris went behind the scenes with a AAA inspector to see what they check out before you check in. Needs to have a deadbolt lock for security. 
that comes out a full inch. We'll call him Inspector 66. After all, his hotel checks for AAA are anonymous. He's not only inspecting for security, like lights and peepholes. All beds have to have a mattress protector, which is this right here. Like a nosy guest. It's not sticky. He's seeing how well a room is cleaned. No bugs, no dust, no cobwebs. We look at the shower curtain, no dark lots, no spots. No mildew. Since the pandemic, hotels have made changes. So have inspectors. He uses this machine now to swab for surfaces people touch a lot and test for enzymes that can signal bacteria. This is something that the guests are going to be touching often. Who doesn't touch the thermostat? Shake it. In five seconds, let's see what we get. Green for good, red for not so good. Superb. And one thing he says most likely to carry germs is this, the TV remote control. But take a look. Since COVID, things are changing. This one has a smooth surface, easier to clean. His findings help him give a AAA rating. This Best Western earns a three diamond status. You can look up thousands of hotels nationwide on the AAA app. But he also told me three things you can check to feel good the room was cleaned. Look at the bathroom mirror for water spots. Look across the room to see if objects are straightened and finally use your nose. I always pause at the door and take in a deep breath. If it smells fresh, he says that's a good sign. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. I think we could have a new series there behind the hotel door. <laughs> Still ahead on the night, the tornadoes have been touching down all over the southeast recently. We survey damage in one town that could have been hit harder. Plus, a COVID comeback. What a U.S. health expert is saying about the possibility and prevention of another outbreak. Now to your health headlines. Dr. Anthony Fauci has a warning for us that while COVID cases are way down, a new variant could quickly change that. Today, while speaking at a university in Italy, Fauci said the world needs to remain vigilant to control and manage COVID so it doesn't quickly mutate into variants that current treatments and immunities cannot control. Fauci said the likelihood of that happening is not known right now, but it's also not impossible. He says he agrees with the World Health Organization's assessment that the virus is no longer a global health emergency, but said it will take diligence for it to stay that way. Texas, just one of several states feeling the effects of recent tornadoes. Take a look at this Waffle House over in Mississippi. It had a portion of its roof taken off after a 110 mile per hour tornado touched down early Friday morning. The National Weather Service said it lasted about 10 minutes and was on the ground for almost nine miles. Right now, only one home appears to have been damaged, but trees and debris scattered throughout the area. On top of all counties across Mississippi today are also in the threat of more severe thunderstorms and hail warnings. My family up in Ohio was very close to a tornado on Thursday night. Just blocks away, they're doing fine, but big mess there in Point Place, Ohio as well. Wow, well, glad that they're okay for sure. Yeah, parts of the lower 48 have really seen an active weather pattern over the past couple of weeks. For us here at home, not so much. High pressure has settled in and it has just been very hot and humid out there. Here's a look at the almanac data for today at a low of 80. That is seven degrees above the average for this time of year. We did have some high level clouds that stuck with us into the afternoon, so our high actually wasn't too bad. We topped off at 95, but with the humidity, the feels like temperatures were still able to climb well into the triple digits. But out there on the actual thermometer, it was 100 in Pleasanton, 108 in Catula. Earlier this afternoon, Del Rio checked in at 101, 97 in Rock Springs, and 95 in Kerrville. Now, right now, it is still hot out there. Upper 80s, low 90s, but feels like temperatures are in the upper 90s and still some low triple digits. This hour, more heat and humidity tomorrow and even into the beginning of next week. So we'll get you more of those details coming up in just a few. Well, 
We hit a record yesterday, and it's not a good one. No. Nope. This is not a fun one, Mia. Never good records this time of year. <laughs> nope, it's not a record that we wanted to break, unfortunately. <sighs> yeah, so it wasn't a record in terms of the actual air temperature, but it was a record in terms of the feels-like temperature and the heat index value. Take a look at this. Yesterday around 3.30 p.m. here in San Antonio, we recorded a peak heat index value of 115 degrees. That officially takes the top spot for the highest heat index value. We do have on record those records date back to the 1940s. So yeah, not a great one, not a record we wanted to break. Wasn't that hot in terms of the heat index value, wasn't that high, I should say, earlier this afternoon. But still, as we head into tomorrow, I think peak heat index values by late tomorrow afternoon could run up to about 110 to 115 degrees in spots. Of course, better chances of finding the even higher heat index values the farther south that you go. But still, we'll need to keep eyes on it. And this is why dew points very elevated out there in the upper 70s and even a few low 80s. So that humidity is just very oppressive. And you can definitely feel it when you do step outdoors. Very sticky. And that's going to be the case tomorrow and to the beginning of next week as well. But as we head into the middle of next week, that's where we could find a slight break in some of those dew points helping out ever so slightly with those heat index values. We'll still have to keep an eye on that. But first, for your Father's Day, if you're planning on stepping outside tomorrow, just know that yes, more heat and humidity is in store. Mid 80s by 10 a.m., low 90s already through the lunchtime hour. We'll see some more sunshine take over into the afternoon as well, helping those temperatures climb into the low triple digits here in San Antonio. Of course, feeling up to about 110 to 100 and 15 degrees in spots. I also do want to mention because more sun is expected tomorrow, the UV index is expected to be very high in the extreme category, which means it only takes about 10 minutes to start developing a sunburn if you are not properly applying sunscreen and taking care of yourself. So definitely keep that in mind, especially if you're hanging out by the pool or at the lake or the river or even at the beach, whatever you may be heading out to. Again, as we head into the afternoon, actual air temperatures climbing to about 102 here in San Antonio, feeling even hotter. Juneteenth, more of the same in terms of, uh, terms of those air temperatures, and that's going to continue for a good portion of next week. And then as we start to see that high pressure break down ever so slightly, move farther west by late week, that's when we could see those temperatures come down a few notches, a few degrees. And then, yes, a couple of very stray storm chances. So still relatively quiet over the next few days, but a lot to monitor in terms of the heat, guys. Okay, that's something to look forward to. Thank you, Mia. Probably cool inside if you're watching arena football. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, guys. <laughs> as the gunslingers are back in action tonight at Freeman Coliseum, coming right up, we're going to give you all the highlights from this back and forth affair against the West Texas Warbirds. Love that name right there. So Joshua, and also want to let you know about Joshua Franco. He is back in Tokyo, Japan this weekend to prepare for his rematch. We'll hear more from the San Antonio boxing champ. That's all coming up next in sports. Has been a disaster. Welcome back. It's game day for the San Antonio Gunslingers. It's the first time back in the Freeman Coliseum after being off last weekend. San Antonio got off to a big lead early. They led at halftime 39 to 17, but the Warboard, Warbirds then took the lead 49 to 47 in the fourth quarter. They outscored San Antonio 25 to 9 in the fourth, but with four minutes to go, quarterback Arville Nelson right there runs it in for the touchdown to get back the lead. He had three touchdown passes, two rushing touchdowns, and San Antonio wins this barn burner 55 to 49. Now we will wait to see when the Gunslingers will play next. They were supposed to play the Albany Empire this coming Saturday, but the NAL kicked the franchise out on Thursday after owner Antonio Brown. Yes, that Antonio Brown, former wide receiver there, failed to pay a fee or fine for recent public comments, according to ESPN. The National Arena League said that they were still working on adjusting team schedules and would make a statement soon. 
San Antonio's Joshua Franco is already back in Tokyo, Japan for a rematch with his title belt on the line. Franco will fight Japan's Kazuto Ioka. They fought each other on New Year's Eve and the 12 round fight ended in a draw. Now Franco is preparing for the rematch. Case at Sports Report. Sports producer Daniel Villanueva spoke with Franco last week to get his thoughts on the upcoming fight in Tokyo. I feel like I'm just, um, it's, it's, it's still a hard camp. I feel like I got my rhythm back ever since the last fight. I feel like I had a little, a little bit of ring rust because I hadn't fought in a year. So I would say I just feel more comfortable and, um, and I'm getting my rhythm back now. Is that what you think is, is the difference in that last fight considering it ended in a draw? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, even though I, I feel like I performed well, I just, I feel like my punches didn't land as clean as I wanted them to. So I feel like a little, it had, it had a little bit to do with the ring rust. Are you a little worried that you would draw, get drawn into not only this rematch, but then another one on top of it, regardless of how it if ends up this time? I'm not worried, but that's, I, that's not what I want to happen. You know, I, I want to, I want to go over there and win so I could, you know, set myself up for, you know, an, another, another fight. And, um, you know, hopefully somebody and you know another another champion or someone in the in the top five so i, I want to you know go out there and win but yeah i just ha i have i just have winning on my mind i don't i don't want to get a draw so i mean <laughs> if, if it does happen that would that would be pretty crazy but uh, i'm not i'm not looking for that i'm just looking to go and win and you know we'll see what happens all right, and San Antonio, of course, is pulling for Joshua Franco here. So here's your fight night info. It is Joshua Franco and Kazuto Ioka in Tokyo, Japan. So he's on the road here, and this is going to take place June 24th. This fight is for Franco's WBA World Super Flyweight title, and you can see more with Franco tomorrow night on Instant Replay. We need to be better, I think. Yeah. We need to have these ready to go. Yeah. yeah. If you give us some more time to think, we can yeah. come up with some more. We need more experience of being a dad. So write in, please, if we need to learn some more jokes, give us some jokes to learn. Right. SAFC may be off this weekend, but the dads on the team are working on their dad jokes. Tomorrow night on Instant Replay, we're honoring dads everywhere with some stories from our student athletes. Join us on Sunday right there. Instant Replay starting at 11 p.m. That's right after the night beat. Great to hear from those guys, and I'm, I'm interested to see what they dad, good, dad jokes they got going on. You have any more for us? Uh, yes. What okay. do kids do? <laughs> what do kids do when they run out of things to do? No idea. They play board games. Okay. <laughs> board games. That's good. All right. Be careful out there tomorrow afternoon and into next week. More heat and humidity in store. So that's going to continue, y'all. All right. Happy Father's Day. I'll see y'all in two weeks. I'm going north. I know he's leaving us for tomorrow, but you're a great dad going to be with your fam. Cooling off in Ohio. <laughs> we'll see.